On this episode of Pedalbox, we're bringing the car back down off the rotisserie and we're finally adding the first piece of bodywork. It's a big day. While we were cleaning everything up to get this thing ready to go back on its wheels, we might have got a bit carried away with the paint here. I think we used about six cans of satin black yesterday, which um, is quite a lot, to be honest. Although, you know, a lot of it sprays past. The bottom of the car is all lacquered as well, so that should protect the paint. And we've also put some new tabs in to hold a floor panel that's going to go around the engine bay to hopefully clean up the airflow under there a bit. Since the floor is going to cover the underside of the tunnel and prevent us from being able to access any of the stuff that's up inside there, and the floor's going on soon, it's pretty much time to get all our hydraulics in. So we've got the coolant lines in, we've got our brake and clutch hydraulics all running through. We've also fit our handbrake back in place. Now to get the lines through, we've had to cut a nice big hole on the top of the tunnel. Now this is a fairly ugly problem that we're going to have to 3D print our way out of in the near future. So I've designed a cap to go over that. With the car going back together, we're going to have to deal with the last few bits of wiring that we left undone before because they were just too head-scratchingly difficult to deal with. And one of them is the brake switch. This has four pins on the back that go in here in a little plug, and that obviously controls the brake light, but it's also a trigger for the cruise control in the ECU. Now, we haven't got cruise control, but we might want it in the future, and we can retrofit the stalk and everything else, so ha having the wiring is very useful. But actuating this, which is just under 15 mil of travel in the switch, from a pedal that has absolutely no space behind it, and ultimately has a lot more travel than that at the very top, is kind of difficult to work out. Now the only place on the pedal, from the pivot at the bottom, which has the, an equal amount of stroke to this switch, is right here, where the balance bar sits. Which is obviously not very convenient, because the balance bar is there, so we can't fix anything to it with any kind of nuts or bolts or anything like that. And there's no space behind the pedal because that's where the master cylinders are. Now I've put together this slightly Heath Robinson little bracket out of a large M10 washer, which will sit over the balance bar and put, move backwards and forwards as the pedal runs. But that will also transition us with 15 millimeters of movement up to this point. It's a little bit of four mil rod that goes onto a piece of the same 10 mil tubing we used for the framework outside on the car, the switch fits into the end of that and that locates it nicely so it can't fall off. So we can now get this pushing back really really neatly and we have quickly tried it before I painted it up and it does seem to work. So we'll show you how it all fits together and then we'll try and make it actuate because we haven't actually printed up the holder for this yet but we should be able to get it to do what it should do. Now with any luck, this right here is the last piece we're going to put on the car before we take it off the rotisserie and put it back on the ground. What we're looking at here is our little battery box and it's going to fit onto the chassis leg just here and hold our battery in place. This is going to stop it moving forward and backward and we're also going to put a hold down strap over the top that bolts in here and to a mounting point that we're putting on the other side just to keep everything solid. And once it's all installed, it will look a little something like that. That's the end of the rotisserie for now. It's time to get the car back down so we can address a few things we found and we couldn't fix while it was in the air and actually start the rebuild. We've got all the suspension back on the car now. And we're getting a little bit more slick at this point at throwing it all back together. It still probably could be a little bit easier, but it is what it is at the end of the day and at least we're getting good at it now. Suspension is as far as we're going to go in the rebuild for now though, it's time for some drastic changes.
The rear arches have a much wider radius around the lights now, and I've been thinking about this for quite a while, whether or not I should cut down the framework having spent so long getting everything else ready to put the panels on. In the end I decided yes, it will look far better and it'll be a lot easier to shape this panel if it's a wider radius, so it's probably a good one to start with as well. Shaping this much sheet metal is definitely new to us. Although we built that little battery tray replacement for the Thunderbird, that's nothing compared to an actual exterior panel that's going to be seen forever on the car. I'm sure there's a better way to do this, but it's not a bad process, even if it's incredibly loud, despite Chris damping it some by sitting on it. Fast forward four weeks, a lot of rain and a quick trip to decimal tenths, and this is the new rear quarter. We've also got our new rear light mount in, which is a lot more secure and seals off the back of the light because the plug is just open and this whole area in here isn't going to be sealed from the outside. Now the inside of this has a little lip on, we're going to 3D print a plastic cover and that will seal up the back of this perfectly, which is exactly what we need. But the important part is this quarter panel, which we've just undercoat for the time being and wrapped around and tacked in. And really, it looks excellent. When the light's in, it works really, really well. But there is one more drastic change we're going to make to the back of the car that I'll show you now. So we've taken this whole lower section of the arch and removed it, because we just don't need it. The IVA specifications for wheel arch covering say that you have to have at least 50 degrees of coverage from the top rearward on the wheel, which we definitely do. It's probably somewhere around the 60, 70 degrees. And you also have to be no more than 150 mil from the center line of the wheel to where your arch cutoff is, which we're well within. You can see coming across here, we're probably close to about four inches thereabouts, and that's with the suspension fully extended. So we should be all right there. Now the rear quarter panel itself, I'm really, really happy with the way the light just pokes out from the back. This slash cut down here was actually largely an accident. Originally it was gonna come flat, but actually it works really, really nicely. And we've rolled around underneath and welded the inside edge rather than going into the top like we did on the other panel that you saw in the little montage we did. Check out shop.pedalbox.show for our range of t-shirts, which admittedly I'm not wearing right now. Our mugs, hats and all sorts of other things, including new long sleeve pedal box t-shirts. And if you'd like to support us more directly, check out patreon.com slash pedalboxshow and you can be one of our Patreons and really help us keep this on track. If you haven't already, also check out our friends at Decimal Tenths, Nick, Spence and Colin over there with the garage just next to the Metro Centre in the northeast of England. Really good guys. I was recently in one of their videos as well, whilst they were fitting up a new exhaust from Cobra onto Nick's Mark V Golf. That's all for now. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.